Hi guys, today we are going to talk about generalized SRV6 or GSRV6 for short. In SRV6, a segment ID is a 128-bit IPv6 address associated with a segment. As such, SRV6 supports to carry a seat list with multiple seats in the SRH to instruct packet forwarding. And this is the basic principle of SRV6. Currently, in most scenarios, SRV6 is mainly best effort traffic with our SIH, or TE traffic with less than 5 Cs. This means that the SRV6 head overhead is under control and acceptable. However, in scenarios where the number of Cs is Cs5, such as TE or SFC scenarios, the SRV6 head overhead may be high. For example, if a SRV6 packet with 10 seats, the following problems may occur. Low packet transmission efficiency. So the two big overhead will affect the transmission efficiency of small packets, reduce hardware forwarding performance. If the seat list contains a large number of seats, the size of seat stack may exceed the person window size of chipset, meaning that the hardware must perform a recycle, which will affect the forwarding performance. So to address this issue, generalized SRV6 is proposed. In an SRV6 domain, seats are allocated from an address block, we call it as C space. So they have the same prefix. For this reason, one C list may carry multiple common prefix and other identical information, meaning that the compression is possible. For example, the prefix a clom clom slash 48 is used as a seed space in an SRV6 domain. And the total length of the node ID and function ID fields is 32 bits. And the argument and padding fields occupy the remaining 32 bits, which are all set to zero. So for seeds in the seed list, the first 48 bits and the last 32 bits are all redundant, where only the 32 bits node ID and function ID fields are variable. In this way, we can avoid to carry multiple, you know, redundant information in C list to reduce the overhead of SRV6 packet. So this is the basic principle of SRV6 head compression. So the main idea of GSRV6 is to delete the redundant information, such as the common prefix from the C list, to and carry only the variable information like node ID and function ID. So thereby achieving packet head compression. The variable part is called a compressed seed, C seed, or generalized seed, G seed. To better understand GSRV6, we devise GCs, which can be a single 16-bit or 32-bit C seed, or a single 128-bit SRV6 seed. We also define a GCD container, which is a 128-bit space that the segment left field points to in the SIH. So the GCD container supports to carry multiple C seed or one single 128-bit SRV6 seed in it. So in GSRV6, different types of GCD can be encoded into a single SIH. To indicate that the next seed is a C seed, we need to define a new flavor. We call it as continuation of compression flavor. And it is also called replace C seed flavor, defined in SRV6 compression draft, which has been adopted by ITF Spring Working Group. When processing a seed with CLC flavor, a node will use the next C seed in the seed list to update the C seed in the destination address field instead of updating the 128 bits in the DA as the normal SRV6 processing. So in order to locate a C seed in the seed list, we need to define a new term called seed index to identify the location of the C seed in a GC container. The SI 
field occupies the least significant bit of the argument field in a seed. Similar to locating a seed through the SL field, we can locate a seed seed through the SL and SI fields. The processing of seed seed flavored seed is very simple. When a node receives a seed with a COC flavor, it checks the SI value in the destination address. So if the SI value is greater than zero, it means that there are some CCs in the seed container to be visited. So in this case, the SI value is decremented by one to point to the next C seed. And then it will be updated to the DA with this C seed and then forward the packet. If the SI value is zero, it means that all C seed in the G seed container have been used. So we need to get the next C seed in the next G seed container. In this case, the SL is decremented by one. Point to the next G seed container. In addition, the SI field is set to three or seven according to the uh, length of C seed. So that we can find out the first C seed in the next G seed container. So after locating a G seed or C seed uh, in the SIH, we can update the C seed to the IPv6 destination address, and then we can forward the packets based on the updated destination address. Here, I will use a simple example to describe how GSF6 works in forwarding. Assuming that a packet needs to be forwarded from node 1 to node 9, and they support GSF6, the common prefix of seed is a clom clom slash 64 and the node ID and function ID fields are both 16 bits long, but actually it can be like 20 bits and 12 bits. It's up to you. So the argument field is 32 bits long and all set to zeros. As such, the seeds from a clom 1 clom 1 clom clom to until a clom 8 clom 1 clom clom are all end seed with CLC flavors. And a clom 9, clom 2 is the normal SRV6 end seed without the CLC flavor. So this figure shows the encoding format of the seed list in the SIH. In reduced mode, the first seed a clom 1, clom 1 is not encoded in the seed list and it will appear only in the DA. Therefore, the SL field can be set to 2 and the SI field set to 0. When the packet is forwarded from the node 0 to node 1, no one detects that the A clone 1 clone 1 in the DA is a CLC flavored and seed allocated by itself. And then it check the SI value. Because the SI value is 0 now, so the N1 decrements the SL value to 1 and set the SI value to 3 and locates the next C seed to clone 1. And then the node 1 updates DA to be like A clum 2 clum 1 clum clum 3 and forward the packet uh, based on the updated DA to the next hop node 2. So after receiving the data packet, node 2 process the uh, COC flavor and seed in the similar way. Because the SI value is greater than 0 now, the N2 decrements the SI value to 2 and locate the next C seed 3 clom 1. And then he updated C seed to the DA and then forward the packet to the next hop, node 3. This processing repeats again and again until the packet is forwarded to the node A. So when the packet is uh, forwarded from node 8 to node 9, the node 9 detects that the DA is A clom 9 clom 2 clom clom, which is a normal end seed allocated by itself. So the N9, the Note 9, will process this seed as a normal SRV6 processing and end the forwarding. So now, we have a basic understanding of GSF6, and we can see that the GSF6 has multiple technical advantages. First of all, GSF6 is compatible with SRV6. It supports smooth upgrade from SRV6 to GSF6, 
and it does not change the SIH encapsulation format at all. Secondly, GSV6 supports efficient compression and large scale network deployment. Using 32 bit CC or GC, the GSV6 supports large scale network deployment and reduces SIV6 seed least overhead by up to like 75% which keeps the best balance of scalability, efficiency, compatibility, and flexibility. And if I'm using 16-bit GSEED, then the compression can be better. The third one is that GSV6 supports flexible address planning, consuming fewer addresses. It can provide stable compression regardless of the perfect type and length, and it allows operators to plan the GSF6 seed space based on their own IPv6 address without any specific or special requirement. And also we can avoid re-addressing in the future. Since GSF6 will not introduce new astro rules, security policies, and even new address comparing to SF6. So we can smoothly upgrade the night network even from SRV6 to GSRV6 with the best balance of scalability, efficiency, compatibility, and flexibility. GSRV6 can help you to enjoy the benefits of network programming with much lower cost for today and the future. Thank you.